Welcome back to our study called The Flood, and we're looking at Genesis chapter 7. Today we're going to focus in on verses 1 through 5, and we call this section, God Sees the Righteous. First, let's talk about the action of seeing. God saw that Noah was righteous in his generation. God saw. What does that phrase mean? Of course, we know that God does not have eyes like us, or he sees like us, or, you know, we should not imagine God sitting around, looking around, taking things in and, and taking notice of things in that way, that would, that would be incorrect. God is omniscient. He doesn't have to wait for events to occur and, and then figure out what he's going to do or how he's going to, how he's going to react to them. And that's what we do when we see. No, God, God sees things differently. God sees differently. Throughout the Bible, we find quotes from God, like this one here to Noah. God says, I have seen. When God says this, are the people supposed to be like, well, thanks God for seeing. Thanks for seeing this. I really appreciate that. Now, I'll go take care of the problem myself. Thanks God. Appreciate it. Is that what they're supposed to do? No. No, when God says, I have seen, it means I know about the situation you're in. I have always known. And here's what I have in my eternal plan to do. How do I'm going to deal with this? Here's what I'm going to do about it. God having seen something means that he has planned to act. With Noah, God saw he was righteous in his generation. God planned a way to save Noah and the animals. And God saw that you know, his ancestor Jacob was cheated by his father-in-law Laban over and over again. God saw and gave Jacob an enormous amount of animals. God saw that the Israelites were being oppressed by the Egyptians. God saw and sent Moses and the plagues. God sees, God acts. That's how it works. If God sees something, it means that he's going to act on something. He already has a plan to do something about whatever you're complaining about. We also notice here in this passage, 1 through 5, is the repetition of it. Even throughout the rest of, the, of this chapter, uh, when you read this chapter, it seems like you keep repeating the same things over and over again. Did Moses have an uncreative moment here? Was he just trying to fill some space in Genesis? Look at verses 2 through 5. God says to Noah that he is to take the animals and his family into the ark, and then the flood came. Go down to 6.10. Noah takes the animals and his family into the ark, and then the flood came. Look at 11 through 16. Noah takes the animals and his family into the ark. And the flood came. In verses 21 through 20, through the first part of 23, we see the other side of what happened. There were families and animals that Noah didn't take on the ark, and the flood came. But then at the end of verse 23 into 24, we find that Noah and his family and the animals were on the ark, and the flood came and stayed for a while. Why the repetition? Why do we, why do we repeat ourselves? Because what we're saying is important. It is the truth, and we know that it is important for someone to know. Moses had the truth about the whole worldwide flood. Noah and his family, he had the truth about where the animals that were alive in his day, where they came from. Did you know that almost every ancient culture in the world has a flood story? It's true, you can look it up. Most have one man and his family being saved from a flood. What Moses is saying here is that this is the truth. Jehovah God saved Noah and his family and the kinds of animals on the ark. That's what he did. This is the truth. The worldwide flood did happen. Moses is saying, here's the truth. God did rescue them. This is the truth. Now, let's take a look at the command and obedience. Look at verse 5. This sounds familiar. We saw this in Genesis 6-2, right? Again, we see the repetition. God commanded Noah, obeyed. Look at verse 9. As God had commanded Noah. Skip down to verse 16. As God had commanded him. This is righteousness. We need to learn this. God commands, we obey. If Noah would have questioned or changed something or ignored part of God's plan, all would have been lost. But righteousness means that if God commands, we're going to obey. Follow Jesus. 
Following him is not a potluck. Following Jesus is not something you just pick and choose his commands, the ones you like, and you ignore the ones that you don't like. He said, if you love me, you will do what? You will keep my commandments. So that's the idea of Noah here. That's the repetition. You see it over and over again. God wants us to remember that righteousness is the truth. Righteousness is following the truth. Righteousness is doing what God has commanded. 